Hi guys, in this video we will show you, in our opinion, the two best uh, expedition vehicle builders that we found at the Caravans alone Düsseldorf in 2021. You out there know that we are creating our expedition vehicle at the moment. Uh, Krug Expedition is one of them. And the other one, in our opinion, is Bliss Mobile. Both of them, in our opinion, they are at the same level. Uh, but check out the video and uh, you decide for yourself. Thanks again, Ron and Bliss Mobile. Thanks again, Dimitri at uh, Krug Expedition for showing us around inside and out the vehicles. Enjoy this video. I am Isabella and I am from Brazil. This is Fabian and he is German. We've been overlanding the world with our home sweet home, Frank the Tank, for the past almost four years. And together with our son Matteo and our two lovely dogs, Uni from Spain and Basco from Germany, we are living even for before. Subscribe and welcome to the family. No problem. Nice to meet yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. And finally, I'm here at the stand at Bliss Mobile. Hi guys, so we are here now with Ron. Ron knows better what they are building. So we're gonna show you a little bit of what they can do. And we are here in front of a nice Cetros I see. And uh, this is a Unimog. But in general, I heard it doesn't matter, right? You can have any chassis you want. Yeah. So at Bliss Mobile, we are specialized in building the box. And you can put the box on basically any truck you want. It can be Mercedes Benz, MAN, Unimog, Iveco. To us, it doesn't matter. What matters is the wheelbase and the payload of the chassis. So, Ron, just tell me about this nice vehicle. It's a Mercedes, I know that. Yeah, it's a Mercedes Benz Zetros. It's the 2733, 27 ton chassis with 330 horsepower. It's got a six cylinder diesel. Uh, of course, it's a six by six. And the fantastic of course, thing it is a six by six. <laughs> well, since there's a 20 foot on there, it has to be a six by six. Just for the Europeans, 20 feet are how long? Six meters. Six meters. Yeah, the box is six meters. Uh, it's got 800 liters of diesel. Uh, unique, well, not unique to the Zetros, but one of its main features is the pendle axle on the rear, um, which is fantastic if you're driving over dunes. Pendle axles is like the Unimog independent, or no? No, so if you're driving over a dune, the, the, the axles, they will hinge between the two rear axles. There's uh, a hinge between them. Okay. The reason for that is it stays on the ground more. Yes. Exactly. Yes, and this is a heavy truck. Yeah. Combined box and truck, we're looking at anywhere between 17 and 18 tons, depending on how much fuel and water is in it. It uses slightly less than 50 liters per 100 kilometers, so it really needs that fuel. Get people out there know I'm gonna get an Arox yeah. stuck to the 4x4. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to me, it has different reasons, it's another topic. We are driving probably around 20 ish, so there yeah. is a difference. There but we difference. but we also have the 330 horsepower. So, your boxes they have those things, it's like a yeah. container, but Correct. they are still not just a container, you build extra. Yeah, it's not an old container that we refurbished. The frames are purposely built for us. Uh, that's a steel container with the traditional twist locks, like this. The new aluminium containers have a different style twist lock. They are bolted on the subframe and the subframe is bolted on the truck chassis. If you undo, undo these four bolts on each corner, you can just lift the box off the subframe and you can drive off with your truck. Okay, so basically that's the main feature that differentiates you from other companies right, out there. Right. So a point for the for the shipping of the container, whatever. So you, if you ship, let's say from Africa to Australia, sure. you would make sure that you have two subframes. You have one in your African station and one on your truck in the yeah. other one, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people ask if it's really viable to ship units separate from the truck. The 11, 13 and 15 foot, they fit inside a container yeah. without a chassis. So you could ship it, but in theory, most people do a roll on, roll off, because else you need two trucks and two subframes as well. Exactly. How much does an empty box, like this 20 feet, six yeah. meters yeah. box yeah. weigh? Empty means uh, no water. So the empty weight, the dry weight of this box is four and a half tons. 
tell me about the dimensions you offer. Like this is one, like yeah. how wide is it and whatever. Yeah, so this is our 20 foot. Uh, it's about 243 wide and 240 high. Uh, six meters long. At the moment it's our largest box, but we are working on a bigger one, a 23 foot. One size smaller is the 18 and then you get the 16, 15, 13 and 11 foot. The small ones up to the 16 are made out of aluminium with an aluminium frame. Okay. The larger ones have a, a steel frame. 243 wide, and they are the same on the Unimog. Good that you mentioned it. The smaller boxes are not only shorter, but they are also less wide. They're 16 centimeters less than the bigger units. Okay. So um, are your size is different than others? There are a few companies building uh, seven meter modules on uh, a three axle chassis. It's uh, a bit longer due to um, due to the slant in the back, so we can extend it half a meter longer on average. Okay, and the width are you wider than others? Uh, yeah, so it's uh, a bit wider than a container concept because they have to stay within uh, a certain standard. Yeah, but we have uh, full. 245 with outside outside weight small one so let's say the the 13 foot weighs in at 1800 kilograms and it just goes up in small steps of two 300 kilograms until we're at the 20. Foot. what is the total weight of a unimog if you get a unimog because i think unimog people want to they have the 7.49 yeah. tons yeah, or whatever yeah, 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 yeah. With with a uh, with the biggest you can put on or the smallest I guess I don't know. So the biggest box you can put on a Unimog with the long wheelbase is our 13 foot unit. Yes. If you've got a Unimog with the double cab uh, or the short wheelbase, you can put an 11 foot on it. The 5023 we've got right here is a heavy truck. So that one combined with the 13 foot weighs in around eight eight and a half tons. I'm afraid. Okay. Too heavy for. The seven and a half yeah. license. There are a lot of tricks you can do. You can change the tanks for aluminum ones. You can change okay. the wheels for aluminum ones. So it depends on what you've done to the truck. And to be fair, it also depends on which country you're driving and Definitely. what you want to do with your vehicle. Definitely. If you stick with the Mercedes-Benz Atigo, yeah, the smallest one, of course, uh, with a short wheelbase and a 13-foot. What I had before, exactly, 1023. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. You can be in that 7.5 ton area, but you have to be sensible with the amount of fuel you take with you, water. What is it? What is transport. the? What is the empty weight? Empty means dry weight. Of the 13 foot? Yeah, with an Atego. 1800 kilograms. Yeah. No, uh, total with, with the truck. The Atego, um, I'm, I don't know for sure. Okay, but a little bit under 7.5. Okay. So while I did my B-roll, I realized there's no walkthrough. Why is there no walkthrough? Well, we didn't install a walkthrough in our z -truss because the z -truss has quite a low roof and the walkthrough in a Bliss mode was situated quite high in the Bliss mode unit because of our fresh water tank. Okay. So we could do one in the z -truss, but it wouldn't be a big one. And as it's our demo truck, uh, we didn't feel like it was worth it. Okay. But the Unimog has it? The Unimog doesn't have it. Ah, okay. Here. Same story, Unimog has a low roof. Okay. Our crawl through is high up there. Not a good match. All right. Let's talk about the subframe next. It's a diamond shaped subframe. You've got an axle in the front on which it can move sideways. Okay. An axle in the middle on which it can move from the front to the back. Okay. And uh, the same one we've got in the front, we've got in the back. So it can move sideways in the back as well. Okay. So if the box is off, and you pressurize the, the rear of the, the subframe, it will go up on the other side in the front. Ah, okay. It's very flexible, um, but the box is not, of course. The box is very stiff. That's the very, very flexible one. To um, prepare the, the truck for the marriage, yeah, we install the, um, the special brackets with the rubber dampers that still allow for uh, a certain torsion of the frame. Yeah, so you can uh, still um, have distortion for the off-road. Yeah, so the um, the wheels are touching the ground as um, as much time as possible. The other way, of course, is more flexible. You can say that. That's definitely true. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing is tied together. Like you see this subframe and the frame, but still flexible enough to go really heavy off off-road. 
Um, so yeah, I think it's a good solution. Yeah. So now we are at the nice butt here. I see those tires. So you have two spare tires. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. So all those frames are all flexible and additional products you can purchase to your box, right? Like uh, stuff. These are standard with the 20 foot in this layout with the quad by garage. Okay. It comes with big doors on the rear. All right, cool. So now we're here at the uh, storage, outside storage. Of course you offer that. Yep. And also you have some gimmick here if somebody wants extra stuff. What's in here? There's a nice kitchen in here. I'll open it up for you. This is our fully electric outdoor kitchen. The induction cook cooktop, a grill, lights, and even a sink. Lights, nice. Gotta have lights. Nice. You can hook it up to our connection box, which is up here. Okay. Uh, here you've got an AC out, you can connect it with complementary cable down here. Same for fresh water. Um, and if you attach a dump hose underneath the sink and just roll it out. Then the cargo box, then we have this uh, space for a bigger cargo box for the, uh, that serves as a housing for the external kitchen. All right, and now I guess we can check out the inside, right? Sure, no problem. Nice system. Yeah, it's a great system. It's a very lightweight snap ladder. We've got a spring inside this cabinet that supports it. So it's really not as heavy as you would think by the looks of it. You can fold the bottom part up as well. Ah, cool. But it's always inside. I mean, it's to be fair, inside. when it's inside and you you lock it, you see the ladder. Yeah. So it doesn't touch the ground. It's inside the unit. And when the ladder is inside and you lock the door, it's got a three-point lock, one here, one here, and one all the way up. Um, it's a very safe, very safe unit as well. Nice. Boom, there we are inside. So yeah, on, with this ladder you don't get the dirt and the snow inside. Yeah, so everything stays in this box and you don't have to clean it too often. Perfect. Yeah. All right, Ron. So now we are inside the 20 feet foot yeah. container. I wouldn't say it's a container anymore. I think it's a nice... It's a very luxurious living. container, isn't it? To be honest, I start out uh, bamboo I love, obviously, because we chose... You chose bamboo? We chose bamboo, good ob choice, obviously. Good it's, it's bright and we chose also, honestly, bamboo and white. Yeah. Because the combination is... It just works. I mean, it, uh, it also depends on your floor and your upholstery, but... The bamboo and white is very European, very fresh, very modern. Exactly. Really beautiful. You have here two more buckles, so you can have two more people sitting. Yep. I yep. see. That's Not allowed everywhere, but we can install these seat belts. At yeah, least. it's an extra yep. if you need yep. that for your kids. Yeah. Nice. So this, I assume, can also be a sleeping a area, yep. a bed. Yep. Yep. And we have obviously here the, the table. Electric that, table. Ele oh, electric. Okay, it goes yep. down and up. And we just saw that you can also, when you want to walk in, yeah, I got one on this side as well. There you go. It's a folding table, also an accessory. The, the, the table itself is standard, but just the folding part is an accessory. Okay, yeah. cool. We have uh, in our cabin also bamboo, but we have a table that will fold away and we don't have a foot. It's a nice gimmick. Yeah. Um, so each company you see does its different things. Um, okay, so you have a lot of storage, right? Yep, yep. These are all overhead cabinets, um, just some shelf, reading lights up here, audio connected to the stereo system, mood lighting. So your focus is 
on the electrics. Definitely, definitely, yeah. I'm actually sitting on the battery banks right now. Okay. This unit has 20 kilowatt, 800 amp hours of battery. It's a 24 volt lithium ion system. Are you using the Victron? Using Victron. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, so these are the batteries. Under our feet are the, is the fresh water tank. All right. Again, 550 liters in this size. Is unit. that standard? That's standard as well. Yeah. Okay. And you are sitting on the deep freezer. Ah, okay. So we've got a an freezer box. Yes, correct. It's a domestic freezer box, and next to the freezer you've got the second water filtration system. Over there we got the normal fridge that's in the kitchen area. Okay, nice. And here's the kitchen, and then in the end you have uh, the bedroom area and yeah. the bathroom. Yeah, and this unit you get a king size bed. It's two by two meter. You can sleep it north to south. Okay. Um, and that's to accommodate the big quad bike garage. Ah, okay. You can also get a 20 foot, for example, with a, a bigger <laughs> kitchen uh, and a slightly smaller bed if you want that. Okay, so this is only so high because of the quad. Correct. These yeah. guys wanted yeah. quads or yeah. you yeah. want to yeah. represent that. Correct. Perfect. On the other side, you have a lot of storage. You have, I see, an from Apple. What is an it? IMAC. iMac. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay, and with this iMac, it's your television, it's your internet. It's your computer, it's, it's your everything. And everyone wants a 4G or a 5G ready antenna and a computer. We are using NAT module and uh, that's going to be a 5G, 4G, 3G, okay. whatever, okay, sure, like a yeah, dome yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah. And then you go into inside and there's the router connected. Yeah. Behind you, I see a Garmin yeah. Uh, what is it called? The, the Overlander. Overlander. Yes, this is the Garmin Overlander. We use this device to install our smart home system on. And with the smart home system, you can operate the lights, you can check on the batteries, you can dump the, the waste tanks. Okay. Um, and as it's a smart home system, if you engage the lighting in your shower through the system, it also engages the ventilator, for example. Ah, all right. Yeah. It's, it's a very complete system. So basically, it's a pre-programmed yeah, we, from your side yes, and then you yes. just put the app on there yes, and you can correct, steer all your correct. things. That's it. And the the color panel from Victron. Ah, okay. Um, and we have multiple Victron devices. Yeah. You mostly use. So this. basically this is also mirrored here. Kind um, of. If you have the Victron app, you yes. can see it here as well. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Nice. You also have a washing machine, right? Yeah. Yep. It's right underneath the bed. Uh, we, can, we can do a washing machine in, in every unit, even in the 11 foot. Uh, but you do lose some space in the 11 foot, yeah. which isn't already that big. Bathroom, it's sure. basically standard, right? Uh, like so in this unit, the toilet and bathroom are separated. Okay. There's a big black water tank underneath the toilet, uh, and the shower has a gray water tank, of course. Okay, nice. This shower is outfitted with uh, optional folding sink, and it's standard in the 20 foot, but it also has the electric towel heater, which is an option in the smaller units. Okay. Hi. Here we are again with Dimitri. You know him from several other videos. He's my project manager. Woohoo! I love it. My project is getting finally to the end. So we are in a 6x6 Arox right now. It's basically mm -hmm. the same chassis except 6x6, 4x4. And now we are in a 7 meter 20 box, which is amazing. And I can tell you, mine is going to look similar, but just a little shorter. But stay tuned and now we go through the truck. It's equipped with a liquid heating system. So it's a heating circuit filled with a coolant connected to two independent diesel heaters in the front. And the whole system is also connected to the engine. So you have the whole floor heated by the liquid, then uh, three radiators uh, in the living area, one in the garage and uh, one in the bathroom. Uh, so the good thing is uh, that um, when you drive, um, you get the whole module heated, including the hot water. Yeah, so the boiler is also connected to that system. And uh, when you stay parked, you have uh, the main parking heater and an auxiliary one. So it's a fully redundant uh, heating system, winter ready. The use is uh, roof mounted, uh, extremely low profile, uh, 6000 BTUs from uh, Vitri Frigo. It's a very good uh, new model from last year. So yeah, you can try it yourself. It's a 24 volt unit. Yeah. 
So this is really special, I think, because I was looking into aircons and I always find those split units, which 110 or 230, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. even the boxes that you have under the seat. Uh, yeah, so that's a 24 volt unit, uh, especially made for the trucks. So. Oven is a combi unit, so it's um, like a, a conventional electric oven, but combined with um, with a microwave. So all in one unit. So it's uh, a huge Big fridge. fridge. Wow. Yeah, so it's uh, 260 liters. Altogether. Isabella is gonna have. Yeah. A good time with that fridge. <laughs> you like all this stuff, but they have uh, catalogs and links and sizes and modules with nice pictures and everything. You can download here somewhere around here. We're gonna put a link where you can get that mm -hmm. above his face. <laughs> Thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button oh. and the bell. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. We did not talk about that. So see Guys, uh, the trade show is over. It was fun. I met a lot of nice people. Behind me is my crew now. I say crew, crew from Krug. Uh, we're gonna fly to the Ukraine. And uh, straight from Dusseldorf, we're gonna go to Kiev and then we're gonna go to Cherkasy. Uh, so stay tuned and you will see how they built my box or whatever. We will be like always, we're spontaneous. But uh, the project is moving on. So bye bye Düsseldorf. Let's check out Kiev. Hey Ron, thanks a lot. Thank you for coming. Ah, COVID, over. come on. <laughs> we are all tested. The three Gs, four Gs, you know, yeah. whatever. We have five G on the roof. That's all cool. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so thank you, Ron. It was a pleasure being here at Bliss Mobile. Um, unfortunate. Thank you. Unfortunately, Isabella couldn't make it in Matteo because of this COVID 4G, 3G, 5G. Also, thanks to Angela, she's holding right now the camera. She's the new Isabella for today. Thank you so much and see you when we see you.